Everyone always recommends you to level your bed at the specific temperature which you're printing at. Because on one hand, it does make sense when you heat a material, it tends to expand. But the question is, how much does it actually expand? And for me, I have a Flashforge Adventure 4, which has a fully CNC aluminum plate. It's at least eight millimeters thick, so there's a good chunk of metal there. Other printers tend to have a thinner print bed than the Adventure 4, so this should be a prime example to see how much a bed can change its level based on temperature changing. I was quite shocked at the results, but let me know what you think after you watch my entire process and see if you can come up with a better explanation. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually readjust my shims. I haven't done that recently and I've noticed that the far right corner, so back over here, the prints usually get too squished against the bed. So here I'm using a micrometer just to measure the shim that Flashforge gives you. So we can see here it's about two clicks or about two thou. I'll throw the millimeter measurement up on the screen. Okay, so here's a major beginner mistake sometimes, and I've just noticed this right now. My nozzle is actually quite dirty. So you want to make sure that your nozzle is completely clean, free of debris or free of PLA plastic that's on it, especially at the very bottom of the nozzle. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up my nozzle, clean the nozzle off, and then redo this. So take a pair of tweezers here, get a good set of metal tweezers that can help you remove filament off that is leaking out from the nozzle, as well as a wire brush. Don't get steel because that can actually damage your nozzle. I've got a copper brush here. You can also get a brass one. So when you're leveling your bed, you want to make sure the nozzle just touches the shim. So you want to slowly go down in increments until the nozzle just touches the shim and you'll feel that resistance. So on the screen, if you look over here, you've got the option of 0.1 millimeters and 0.05. I'm actually gonna now switch to 0.05. So it looks like at negative 1.13 millimeters. I can feel a reversion from the fan. Then everything is good. When you're doing this, it's great to have pen and paper or sticky notes to write down those measurements. So these are the values that I recorded for my 9 point leveling. You can see the center, it's actually supposed to be negative 1.13. The reason why I have it at 1.13 is because when you start off bed leveling and you already have a pre-existing bed level, mine was at negative 1.13, the smallest increments that you can move in is 0.05. And that measurement runs true for the entire center of the build plate. For some reason on the far left, we see the measurement changing from the back left to the front left from negative 1.12 to negative 1.13. On the right side, it's a fairly consistent negative 1.2. So now we're gonna add shims and we'll see what we get after adding shims. After adding shims, the only thing that I needed to do is add one more shim to the front left corner of the bed to make it even with the rest. All right, I won't bore you with this whole calibration process. I'll come back after I've done 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 degrees increments on my bed and we'll see what kind of bed leveling we get after this all. So here are all my notes from all the bed leveling. At the top, you can see the temperatures, and then I have all the measurements, all nine of them. Just to note, my bed actually started off at an ambient temperature of 15 degrees, so I had to heat it up to 30 degrees, and here are the results. At 40 degrees, you can see that they're pretty much the exact same. At 50 degrees, we start to see a shift in it, and I have stars where I felt like some points felt looser. At 60 degrees, it was true, and I actually had to drop the nozzle on certain points. 70 degrees I continue on and here the average bed level is negative 1.2 and at 80 degrees it dropped all the way down to negative 1.2 with negative 1.25 being the lowest point. Here is a graphed output of all the results and pretty much as temperature goes up you can see the bed leveling points drop. It's weird to me because I would expect the aluminum bed to actually expand and therefore we'd see the points raise up as we go up in temperature. So it should go from negative 1.15 to negative 1.1 and so on. I'm not really sure if you guys got any theories, let me know in the comments down below because I'm a little stumped right now. But these are the experimental results and I can't argue with them. So our bed leveling is all done from 30 degrees all the way to 80 degrees. Now we're gonna print out some test squares at 80 degrees first because I have the bed temperature set there. 
and then we'll print them out at 30 degrees and see what the difference is. So the first print at 80 degrees has finished and we're gonna make some comments on it. If you look carefully at the infill, you can see the nozzle actually squished up some filament so that it made some lines on the top of the filament, which doesn't look great. This just indicates that the nozzle was too close to the bed. So I'm actually gonna reprint this at 80 degrees and make some minor adjustments to the actual build plate leveling. So I'll probably change it from negative 1.20 to about 1.16 and see what kind of results we get. The next thing is if you guys try this, you might see some of these weird lines that are going across your prints and wondering what it is. Well, that's essentially the nozzle traveling above your print and leaving a mark on there. So for me trying to get this print off the bed, I actually always use an X-Acto knife. As much as people hate this, that's really the only way that I've found getting stuff off the build tack for the Adventure 4 is possible. Just make sure that you don't dig into the bed, but actually go parallel to the print. So you're just scraping the print off of the build tack rather than scraping into the build tack and causing your print bed to gouge out some pieces. But this build tack stuff is pretty strong. So if you do go in a little bit, don't be too worried about it. I was the first time, but now I'm not. Okay, so I guess during that video, I gave that advice of using X-Acto knife. However, with this X-Acto knife, I actually just changed the blade or actually half the blade broke off, so we've got a new tip right here. That's how I cut into my plate the first few attempts of using this X-Acto knife. But if you have a dull X-Acto knife, then it works perfectly fine, but I guess I wouldn't recommend using an X-Acto knife unless you have spare build tag plates lying around. sliced into my build deck here and this is probably a dead bed at least on this side it is we'll try to reuse this for this experiment center is definitely a lot easier to get off just because I printed there before okay you know what this is not even worth it I'm just gonna scrap this bed and that's why it's always good to have a second bed, guys. Here's my second attempt, and I actually raised it by 0.06 millimeters and got this result. You can also see this time it was a lot easier for me to take the print off the bed, and there's a special trick to this. I'll be sharing this in a future video, so be sure to subscribe, or if you know what it is, let me know in the comments down below. I actually didn't get a chance to take any pictures because I was so eager to get it off the bed, but commenting on the print as I remember it, the filament that got squeezed up was not there anymore because I changed the leveling of the bed. So I think all in all, once you get your bed leveled to whatever you use, you actually want to take it up by about 0.6 or maybe 0.8 millimeters if you're using this build tack bed from Flashforge. Another thing you could do is actually use maybe a piece of paper which is 0.1 millimeters thick versus the shim that they gave you at 0.05 millimeters. That will also be another way to prevent your nozzle from being too close to the bed. Here's the print completed at 30 degrees bed temperature or basically room temperature. Just for a bit of context, before I actually started this experiment, I raised the height of the gantry by about 0.06 millimeters. And this is because my experience with the 80 degree bed where the filament actually got squished into the bed a little bit too much and we saw some filament fold out around the nozzle. So I learned from that mistake and raised it up. And sure enough, we're not seeing the rough texture on the infill portions. We are having a bit of the opposite problem here though, where we're seeing gaps between the outline as well as the infill. So this might be the trade-off that you're making when you're increasing the height of the nozzle off of the bed. The other possible explanation is that my extrusion ratio is a little bit too low. But looking at the left side, we can see the infill, there's not much gap between that and the perimeter, and the gap gets a little bit worse as we move to the right side. Now we're gonna see if there's any difficulties with this 30 degree bed versus the 80 degree bed. Fingers crossed, guys. Oh, not too shabby. Okay. 
Now removing filament off this bed and pushing with the scraper, there was a considerable amount of force I needed to use. So in a way that's a good sign because your prints are gonna stick fairly well to this bed. And that proves that you don't need high temperatures for PLA to stick to your flash forge bed. In fact, I'd almost recommend not going up in temperature at all because we saw what happened at 80 degrees and you run that kind of risk of squishing your filament into the bed and causing it to essentially stick permanently to your bed and ruin it. So the conclusion for this video is that when you go up in temperature, it seems like your bed height actually drops a little bit. There's a difference of about 0.05 millimeters, so not a huge difference, but if you are changing your temperature by more than 50 degrees, from when you first calibrated it, then you should consider redoing your bed leveling at that temperature. However, if you're changing about 20 or 30 degrees between the temperature that you calibrated at to whatever temperature you wanna print at, then I probably wouldn't bother doing that. Also, the fact that prints stick really well to the build tack bed for the Flash Forge Adventure 4, I highly recommend you check out my video on how I replaced the bed that I ruined with PEI, and the results of printing with PEI are amazing. I'm actually going to shoot another video on showing you the comparison between BuildTac and PEI, so stay tuned for that and subscribe.